Father, we're thankful tonight for the gift of eternal life through the Lord Jesus, the unspeakable gift. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of music and those that you have gifted, uh, Lord, to minister to us in song. Uh, we pray that our spirits would be lifted tonight. We pray we'd be encouraged. Uh, we pray, Lord, even that we would have some fun and be entertained at times. Thank you for the Herbert family, the extended family. We pray, God, your blessing upon them. Uh, give them, I pray, your spirit's direction this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. When we were trying to decide something uh, for the artist series for the 50th anniversary, uh, the Herberts came to mind. Uh, in every sense, they've been an example uh, family um, at Maranatha. Uh, first of all, from a, a musician standpoint, they are very, very accomplished. Um, I remember uh, having them in class, and, and, uh, and they always did very, very well. <laughs> And then Jody, who wasn't even a music major, decides to play this song on a recital that, that was so difficult. I had to play the second piano part. It was so difficult that it changed my hair color. And so <laughs> so uh, it, it's just a, a blessing. But you know, beyond just the music, uh, they're committed to the Lord. And that's, that is evident in everything they do. They're nice people. Uh, they don't wear their expertise on their sleeve. Um, they're very accomplished, but very down to earth. And that's refreshing. That's, um, I, I believe that's the way it's supposed to be. And uh, it's refreshing to be able to see that. Uh, the Herbert family has invested many, many dollars in lessons all the way through. Very fine teaching that they've continued. And, um, and it's borne fruit. And so it is an investment, and it does reap benefits later on, and you'll hear some of that tonight. So we're grateful that you're here. Please, if you have a cell phone, turn it off. Uh, don't, don't add to the music in any sense. Uh, uh, we just want to uh, enjoy uh, what they've done. There'll be a variety of music. I think under the circumstance, it would be appropriate to clap after everything. And then each number. Uh, Dr. Marriott will get up and pray for the offering. And then uh, Jack Herbert will say something about this song before the intermission uh, the, the, to the praise of his glory. And then there'll be a short intermission. The lights will flash when it's time to come back. But I trust you'll enjoy the program in every sense. So welcome the Herberts.
I'd like to welcome you here this evening. We are the Herbert family, and we're glad for the opportunity to be here. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that arrangement of Home on the Range for you trivia buffs. That is the uh, state song of Kansas, so you need to know that, okay? <laughs> and if you were to ask a Kansan, they'd actually know that, so that might be better than your state. And uh, so we thought it was appropriate that we would use that this evening to begin because uh, my kids all got their initial music training from uh, time spent in Kansas. Uh, before we go any farther, I'd like to introduce uh, who we are and what, where we're at these days. Uh, my name is Jack, sometimes called Dad. Uh, <laughs> depends on the level of the funds, I guess. And uh, so uh, I'm a 77 grad of Maranatha, and uh, my wife Paula was at the piano. She's a 78 grad, and uh, so together we serve uh, an Abilene um, Bible Baptist Church and Abilene Baptist Academy in Abilene, Kansas. Also at the piano uh, was my daughter-in-law, uh, Sarah Herbert, and uh, she's a uh, 2011 and a 2013 graduate of Maranatha. Guess she didn't get it right the first time. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so she graduated twice, and uh, she is uh, married to Chip. Uh, they serve, uh, Chip graduated in 2010, and 13 as well, and uh, they uh, serve at Faith Baptist Church in Pekin, Illinois. Chip is the assistant pastor there and a part-time teacher. Uh, in his spare time, he teaches online classes for MBU, and then they both have a really important full-time job, and that is raising my grandkids, Susanna and Caroline. <laughs> Smile. The whole reason my wife wanted to do this tonight was to see the grandkids. So uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's their main job, according to my wife. Uh, we also have uh, Teresa, who is an 05 grad. She uh, lives up in the Twin Cities area, uh, plays in a number of different groups up there, and she also teaches music at Woodcrest Baptist Academy in Fridley, Minnesota. Uh, we have uh, Jody, who is a 2007 grad of Maranatha, and... Now she's here in Watertown, and she thoroughly enjoys teaching math to some of you lucky few. Um, but uh, she, that's what uh, she does with her time. Um, we do have uh, part of the family that you're not going to see up here this evening. Uh, Elizabeth Ayers uh, is part of our family, and uh, she graduated in 09 and again in 16. And she teaches Christian school in Findlay, Ohio. And uh, so... Uh, She's part of our family as well. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, we have Trisha. She graduated in, in 2016, uh, was full-time teaching music and math in uh, Faith Baptist School in Pekin, Illinois. And so what we thought we would do is, to give you just a little variety, we're going to switch from Home on the Range to a little Box. So Trisha is supposed to be ready to play uh, a first movement of a Bach concerto for you on the piano.
Benjamin Schmolk was a uh, German Lutheran pastor who lived in the late 1600s. And he was most famous for the fact that he wrote over 900 hymns. And uh, this hymn text, My Jesus As Thou Wilt, uh, is, is one of those. And uh, it's been set to several different tunes, but the most famous tune, and the one that uh, we'll play tonight, comes from the German opera, Der Freischutz, and, uh, which was written by Weber. Messager wrote the Solo de Concours for the uh, competition at the Paris Conservatory in 1899. And the competition basically was who can write the piece that sounds the hardest. It doesn't actually have to be the hardest, but it has to sound really hard. And uh, later in the program, Teresa is going to be playing a piece called Enfre, which is written for the same competition some 30 years later. Um, but uh, Messager was not primarily an instrumental composer. He wrote mostly opera, and you can hear a little bit of that in this clarinet work as well, which is his only work for clarinet. Thank you. 
Mozart wrote his um, four horn concertos for a very good friend, Ignatius Lübgeg. Well, Lübgeg was a very good friend. <laughs> Mozart was not so much. Um, uh, he needed Lübgeg because he was the um, best horn player of his day, um, but would often make jokes as far as like writing jokes on the score about his friend, and even in the music itself. Mozart takes, um, pokes a little bit of fun at the limitations that the horn of his day had, a natural horn uh, with no valves, which means um, chromaticism is a little bit more challenging and often sounds a little muffled or not as pretty as the open tones. So he writes jokes in all the time, including making the most loud pitches, stopped notes, or even cadential points, which should have been a beautiful open tone, not so much. So sit back and enjoy on the natural horn Mozart's uh, fourth concerto, the Rondo Movement, and see if you can enjoy some of the musical jokes Mozart threw in there as well. Thank you. 
Gottschalk was born in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1829, so I'm sure he heard a lot of banjo playing growing up. One interesting thing about this piece in particular is that Gottschalk quoted a song by Stephen Foster called Camptown Races. It's at the very end of the piece, and if you listen hard, you will hopefully be able to hear some of Camptown Races. It goes, Camptown ladies sing this song, do da, do da. You know, everybody knows the do da, do da part. So see if you can hear that as I play.
In Psalm 34, one through three, David proclaims, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. During the next several pieces, we invite you to exalt the Lord with us as we reflect on the character and attributes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
I'm enjoying it. I know that you are as well. We're going to give you an opportunity to help with the expenses of the evening. Uh, men, I can't see you, but I hope that you're coming right now to receive the offering. And as you come, uh, let me just mention that I know nothing about this other than I'm to announce it. Uh, during the intermission, you are encouraged uh, to take pictures, that is, uh, of yourselves, okay? Have somebody take a picture and, and then post it either on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Artist Series 18. Artist Series 18. Now, there's a reason for that, and I guess we're going to find out a little later in the program. So if you'll help with that, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Let's stand together for prayer, if we can do that. Give you a chance to stretch just a little bit for intermission. Lord, we thank you that you have been so faithful uh, to provide richly for the needs of Maranatha Baptist University. These 50 years, beginning with Maranatha Baptist Bible College and all the way through, uh, Lord, I pray that you would use the offering tonight for your glory. We thank you for the Herberts. We thank you for what we've already heard. And we pray that it would continue, uh, Maranatha, to be the praise of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
It is 50 years with Maranatha, and uh, we were thinking about making memories, and uh, one of the memories we have of Maranatha certainly is uh, the Cedarholms and Mrs. Cedarholm uh, writing the school song uh, to the praise of his glory. I remember traveling in the uh, Madrigal Choir, and we would come up to the front, and we were there ready to go, and then uh, there would be like a chord, and she would come down the middle aisle, and place would stand and we would sing the school song. It kind of still gives me chills. It was a great time. And uh, Mrs. Cedarholm didn't direct the music. She kind of directed a word or something and we all understood exactly what she wanted. And uh, so that was a great memory of uh, To the Praise of His Glory. Tonight we're going to do a brass arrangement, a little different um, than what you've heard exactly before, uh, but I think you'll enjoy uh, this arrangement of uh, to the praise of his glory. Thank you. 
mentioned um, the uh, On Foray is also a Paris Conservatory competition piece written by Boza. Of course, um, Boza did have access to a valved instrument, but he still enjoyed some of the same techniques uh, with the stopping and the muting and things like that that came from my forefather, the natural horn.
One of my favorite musical memories with my family is the opportunity that we have had to take a couple of missions trips overseas, musical missions trips. Our first missions trip a few years ago was to the country of Brazil with missionaries Tom and Penny Latham. It was a good choice for us because the Lathams are also used to using unconventional means to get the gospel out. Uh, he uses wrestling camps and, and different activities to get out into the different schools. For us, of course, it's music. And we find that music is a good way of um, traversing cultural barriers and, and language barriers that our limited language skills maybe can't uh, do for us. Um, on the other hand, though music certainly can um, reach across those barriers, it also gives us an opportunity to highlight some of the cultural and um, unique things about our world and, and the diversity that we see in our creation. Um, so I hope you enjoy this small taste of um, Brazilian culture, um, the Danca do Indio Bravo by Hector Villalobos.
we are going to travel now to a different part of the Southern Hemisphere, Australia. Its beautiful coastline, which draws many, many, many tourists every year, also served as the inspiration for this piece. So hopefully as we play, you will be able to picture its coastline, even if you haven't been there, hopefully you'll be so amazed by the piece that you'll be able to picture it in your head. Uh, it's called Go Coast Harmonies.
first song in the program is Saber Dance. Now, you can't think about Saber Dance without thinking about the Saber Cats, right? And uh, you probably didn't know that Saber Cats danced. They don't. <laughs> At least not on this campus, they don't. <laughs> well, we were uh, thinking about uh, this song and, and the... Uh, natural affinity from the title to the Saber Cats, and we thought it would be fun, uh, since this song is lively and captures the enthusiasm of a college campus, to have a slideshow of uh, pictures from past fine arts events as well as some of the selfies that you took tonight. And so while they're playing uh, this uh, song, you're going to get to see pictures of um, different Saber Cats. And so I hope you'll enjoy Saber Dance. John Barrows was a um, professor of uh, porn at the University of Wisconsin-Madison um, until he died in 1974. I think it was like 1961 and 1974. And his greatest love was chamber music, uh, getting a chance to play with others and to experience the joy of playing with others. And he was a little distraught over the fact there wasn't enough horn repertoire out there. So he took it upon himself to write a few. And we've kind of been having the same theme all night with the horns, and that is Le Chasse, which is hunting and going back to our roots with the hunting horns. And so we hope you enjoy the hunt as we play Le Chasse. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Marriott and the administration and the music department for inviting us to come and play tonight. Marriott has uh, meant a lot to our family, and we love it. And uh, there are so many people uh, on this campus that have impacted our lives, and so it's a real honor and privilege for us to be able to play for you tonight. Uh, ever since I can remember, uh, our family has done music for you know, nursing homes and churches and stuff, and sometimes with extended family. And uh, it's been a, a joy and privilege to be able to uh, take uh, some of this music and, and use it to serve the Lord. And uh, recently we've been able to do a couple of missions trips. And so this last song is uh, kind of along the same theme as the one that Jody mentioned, that um, we were able to take a missions trip in 2016 to Ireland and Wales and use music as a tool uh, for encouragement and an outreach tool as well. And so we took this uh, arrangement by, by Tim Kyle uh, with us because it fits the idea of going to Ireland. Uh, Isle of Hope, Isle of Tears is a song that is made popular by uh, the Irish tenors. And uh, it's about a young girl named Annie Moore who was an immigrant coming to the U.S. and she came to Ellis Island and uh, feeling the emotions of uh, the hope uh, that uh, she has in coming to the U.S., but also um, the sadness of leaving behind her homeland. And so uh, I hope you'll enjoy Isle of Hope, Isle of Tears.
I just asked, do they have an encore? And Chip said, no. <laughs> we really appreciate uh, the performance tonight. And may I just say, that this was uh, thought out just a little bit. I'll say it that way. Um, we were thinking about them. Dr. Ledgerwood said, what about the Herberts? And I said, wow, uh, they epitomize what Maranatha is trying to accomplish in students uh, to excel, uh, to be at the top uh, in their abilities and how they have honed their talents. At the same time, to be engaged in ministry with what God has given them. And uh, with that last, by the way, I'm thrilled because they showed Ireland and then they snuck a couple of slides in of Wales. And I'm sure you noticed what I noticed. There were two kids that stood out in the picture. Uh, my two grandchildren were around that table, um, and uh, we, we enjoyed that. And we had great reports about how they uh, impacted that little community where uh, my daughter and son-in-law are ministering, planting a church. And uh, they went in, and they ministered, and uh, it was a, a, a vehicle uh, to get people uh, there and to see what God is doing in that ministry. So they, they were there in the whole hall uh, in that community, and uh, they, the people there were thrilled to be able to have an event like that. They love music in Wales. And so if you would, that's one more time, and you can stand up, and that's, that's give them a round of applause. Have them come out one more time if they're, if they're there, all right? Come on. I've asked them to be down here in the front. If you'd like to greet and say a word, express your appreciations, please do so. Let's have the lights, and you are dismissed. Thank you.